All right, so this video is to help us uh, figure out uh, how the beginnings of graphing trigonometric functions. Now, this particular video uh, has a lot of uh, assumptions to it. Uh, one of the assumptions being you would know the difference between degrees and radians because typically we graph uh, trigonometric functions in radians. So hopefully if you uh, need some help with that, okay? So let's say we had 100 degrees, okay? Uh, if we had 100 degrees, in order to change that to radians, you would multiply it by pi over 180. Okay? And so in radians, 100 degrees changes to, again, I can cross off a zero there, 10 over 18. I can reduce 10 and 18. Uh, two goes into both those, so 5 over 9. So my, in radians, 100 degrees equals 5 pi over 9. Okay, so if you're like, what just happened? I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, I did another video that I, uh, that I changed degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Uh, that might be really helpful and beneficial to you. Okay, but this is not what this video is about. That's, that's one assumption. Uh, the second assumption this video makes is uh, that you realize that there are 360 degrees in a circle. Okay, right in a circle it goes round and round and round. So the point of a circle is that it's never ending, right? You just continue the same cycle over and over and over again. Same thing with trigonometric functions. We repeat the same cycle over and over and over again, okay? So, uh, so a whole cycle is 360 degrees. So if I change that to radians, so pi over 180, okay? Well, I know that 180 goes into 360 two times, right? And there's one. So I have 2 pi. So 360 degrees is 2 pi, okay? And this is what we call the period length, okay? So when you think of like, oh, it goes around one time, okay? The typical period length of a trigonometric function is 2 pi, okay? So starting at 0, which I'll write 0 right here, okay? And then here will be, okay? This will be considered pi over 4, which, if you're writing it in degrees, is 90 degrees. Okay. And then right here is going to be pi over 2, which is, no, excuse me, Mr. Schwant made a goof here. So pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Okay. Pi is 180. Okay. Uh, 3 pi over 2 is 270. Okay, and then here is 2 pi, which is a full 360. Okay. So those are the, the major milestones for a, uh, a graph, especially ones we're doing with sine and cosine here, okay? So that represents one period or one cycle. In fact, I'll write cycle here. So the period of length is a cycle. Okay? Now, we could plug this into a calculator. If you, if you have a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator and you plug this in. Excuse me. If you have a graphic calculator plug this in, you would get these answers. But I'll go ahead and tell you. So if you plug in sine of 0, okay? So you plug in sine of 0. So sine of 0 is 0. So I'm going to put a dot here at 0, 0. Oh, by the way, let's label this. Okay, so this would be 1. This would be 2, this would be negative 1, negative 2. And the graph I'm using is, uh, we'll just call it f of x equals sine of x. Again, it could be theta, it could be uh, beta, it could be delta, whatever you want it to be. So x is just a variable. Okay, so if I plug in 0 for x, sine of 0 equals 0. If I plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 equals 1. Okay. If I plug in sine of pi or sine of 180 degrees, it equals 0. If I plug in sine 3 pi over 2 or 270 degrees, it equals negative 1. And if I plug in sine of 2 pi or sine of 360 degrees, I'm back to 0. Okay. And here is what one cycle of sine looks like. It kind of curves and starts up, goes down, then comes back up. Okay? 
So that is what it does. Okay, so if we let it go on forever, it would literally do this. Go ahead, up, down, up, down, up, down, forever and ever. It would without stopping, right? Because sine, just like every other graph, is a continuous graph. It doesn't stop. Okay, but we're only worried about one cycle of sine here, so I'm just doing that part right there. Okay, uh, so something to write down. The critical point, okay, or the starting place of this graph is at 0, 0. Okay, so that's the critical point, 0, 0. And that is what one cycle of sine does. Okay, so, but now I'm going to write in different colors here. And let's say I made some changes. Okay, so let's say I had this sine of x, and then minus pi over 2, okay? So just like all the other shifts, okay, notice how it's with x, I put parentheses around it, okay? Notice how it's with x, but it, whenever it says minus, it really means the opposite. So I need to go to the right pi over 2, right? Because we do the opposite. So usually negative means go to the left, but... If we do the opposite of what's with x, so we go right pi over 2. So this time, if that were my equation, rather than starting at 0, 0, my graph would start at right here, pi over 2. Okay? But it's going to follow the same pattern, but just start right at pi over 2. So it's going to go up, down, down, up. Right? So do you see how the blue graph... It, it's the same exact graph from before, it's just moved a little bit, okay? So all it did was move to the right a little bit, okay? And the same thing, let's say I added this to the equation, okay? Let's say I put a plus 1 on the back end of it, okay? So it's the same graph except everything shifts up 1. So from my... Critical point zero, 0, I've already added a pi over 2 to the right, and now I'm going to go 1 up, okay? So my graph's going to start here at the purple, okay? And it's going to follow, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. Whoop, that's not a very good graph. Go up, go down, come back up. So you see it's the same as the blue. The only change is, okay, the only change is, is that it's moved one unit upwards, Okay? So it's just like all the other graphs we've done before, but you didn't, if you didn't know radians, how would you know? And for sine, the critical point's at 0, 0, okay? So hopefully that helps you there, get the things done. In class tomorrow, we'll talk about amplitude, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to know, okay, if I make another graph here. So the kind of brother or sister to sine is cosine, okay? So sine and cosine kind of go together there. But luckily, you don't need to know anything about the radians because it's the same. So a regular cycle or period length is 2 pi. Okay? So it starts at 0. Uh, we'll say this is pi over 2. We'll say this is pi. We'll say this is 3 pi over 2. And we'll say this is 2 pi. Okay, and again, we'll add some uh, amplitude here. One, two, negative one, negative two. Okay, so that's one cycle of cosine. So let's write that function here. So cosine. All right, so let's do g of x equals cosine of x. Okay, all right. So, but the critical point for cosine, this is where it actually is a little different. The critical, oh, I can't even spell it. Critical point is, starts at 0, 1. Okay? Because if you were to plug in cosine of 0 into a calculator, it actually equals 1. Okay? So cosine, if you plug in 0, it's 1. If you plug in cosine pi over 2, it equals 0. Cosine of pi equals negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And cosine of 2 pi is back at 1. Okay? So one cycle of cosine looks something like this. 
okay? So kind of, you would say, oh, that looks like a parabola, okay? But this is just one cycle of it. If I were to continue it, again, it would continue going down, up, down, right? Not like a parabola. It would actually keep going that same cycle, but we only graphed one cycle here, okay? So just like sine, let's say I wanted to add a little something to it. If I wanted to go plus pi, okay? Let's say I wanted to go plus pi, which really means, again, rather than going to the right, I'd go to the left. So I go left pi, okay? Which means uh, here would be negative pi over 2, and here is negative pi, okay? So my graph would start at negative pi, but do the same things from before. It would come down, hit here, then come back up. Right? So it's just like the orange, it just shifted because it was with x, we just move it to the left. Okay? Let's say I had this graph. So cosine pi plus, I mean x plus pi, minus 1. Okay? So the minus 1 tells me I go down 1. Okay? So from my purple graph, I would actually go, it actually starts here if I go down 1. But then from here, it goes down, down, up, up, like this. Okay? So see how the whole graph shifted down one unit. Okay? So those are what we call phase shifts and vertical shifts. But again, just like a regular uh, quadratic graph, cubic graph, cosine, the, the only difference with trigonometric functions is that rather than using uh, regular numbers, we use radians. Okay? And we'll get more practice with this, but I wanted to introduce this to you. Okay, and we'll see how well you do after you take the online quiz, but here are the basics of graphing with sine and cosine.